Greetings and salutations, loyal viewers of this channel. My name is Sean. I will be your captain. Let us set sail on this journey because Anna Kasparian decided to debate Dennis Prager and she got absolutely demolished in every possible way. We're going to watch it. We're going to enjoy it. It's going to be hilarious, and this is all the prelude to the part two, where Jank Uger rages out against Dennis Prager and also experiences similar results. But before we get into this, before we do the deep dive, we have a sponsor for today's video. That's how we do it over here on this channel, so we'll toss it to the sponsor, bring it back over here, and discuss the debate on the other side. Hey, did you know that silver dipped in price because a lot of people were panic selling it? Did you know that silver is crucial in all manner of production? Production, and once pre-pandemic production levels resume, silver's price is expected to go through the roof. Well, now you do, and what you got to do about it is go over to noblegoldinvestments.com right now or call a specialist at 877-646-5347 and get invested in silver. This is the perfect time to start a silver IRA with Noble Gold. And if you start a qualifying IRA this month, you will be gifted an American Virtue 3-ounce silver coin with Jefferson's face on the front and a liberty lady on the back it's absolutely amazing it's beautiful it's got some weight to it real money should have weight to it and you need to get on board that's noblegoldinvestments.com 877-646-5347 we ache to have them on our shows we ache to debate them but they won't debate us and they won't come on our shows and they won't us have us on their shows i have offered tens of thousands of dollars to any left-wing columnist on the New York Times to debate me anywhere they want. They could choose the moderator. They could choose the audience hmm. and serious money. Joining us now is Dennis Prager, the man you just saw in that video. And Dennis, uh, I guess you could call TYT acetaminophen because uh, we don't want you to ache. We want to make sure we give you an opportunity to feel good uh, by debating well, someone I, on the left. Funny, I, I was thinking if only you were a New York Times columnist, how much money you'd be making now. Well, I'm a little more honest than a New York Times columnist, so uh, this will be a great conversation. Thank you for doing it. One of the things I absolutely can't stand about the way that this debate opens is that it opens with Anna Kasparian talking about how the left is totally willing to debate one Dennis Prager, and Dennis Prager should definitely debate all of these people who answered the call to debate him, even though he put out his call for specifically New York Times journalists and other people like the Young Turk. So I wanted to just kind of start off with... I guess disagreeing with the notion that the left is afraid to have these kinds of discussions or debates. In fact, you had tweeted that video that we started this conversation with, and there were a lot of responses from prominent individuals on the left. I want to give you a few examples, uh, starting with Vosh, who's a big Twitch streamer. He's got a big YouTube channel as well. He says, you couldn't be more wrong. I love spirited debate in the free marketplace of ideas. He even provided his email and would love to have that conversation with you. My good friend Ben Burgess also responded. He's a great guy. He says, hi, Dennis. Uh, I'd be delighted to chat with you either on my show or you could host it through PragerU or I'm sure Modern Day Debate or some other neutral platform would be happy to host it. And on multiple occasions, I noticed that Sam Cedar would also love to debate you. So he responded in that tweet as well. Now, if you don't remember, Anna Kasparian recently put out a video and we gave her credit for it, even though she was wrong in significant parts of the video, where she came out against crime and against leftist criminal justice reform policy because it was obviously leading to spikes in crime and people being auto-released. If you haven't realized, I've been very focused on these issues on this channel. Well, PragerU actually invited Anna Kasparian on, and rather than her just declining politely, she decided to say, I'm not doing it. I'm not taking your blood money. You're disgusting. No matter how much you want to pay me, I'm not coming over to Prager U. Prager U reached out to me because they think that I want to be friendly toward them because I've been talking a little more about crime. Uh, not interested in Prager University at all. Don't care what the money is. Don't care what, what they want to do with oh, me. Oh, I bet the money's good, though. I don't care. Garbage. Oh, I bet it's so good. Yeah, I, I, I don't. it's endless and unearned. I'm not your friend, <laughs> Prager U. Mm -hmm. But anyway, let's get to the story. This is hilarious. So we did reach out to Anna Kasparian to ask her to have civil discourse with us. And now she's just exposing that she's not willing to have a conversation with people she disagrees with. Here's the receipts, just in case you wanted to see them. You can trust nowhere in this message did we ask Anna Kasparian to be friends. <laughs> and I'm very glad she doesn't care what the money is because it was going to be zero. <laughs> Anyways, go off, sis. Keep exposing your lack of ability to have civil discourse. And we'll keep doing our thing over here. 
to which a member of the PragerU team said, we weren't going to pay you anything. We just wanted to talk to you and you freaked out. So that is the setup, the backbone for this debate that we're having right now. And of course, Anna Kasparian goes and says, no, the left totally wants to talk to people, even though part of the reason why she's here with Dennis Prager is because she didn't want to talk to Prager University. So the whole thing is boring. She mentions Vosh. She mentions Sam Cedar. Give Vosh credit. He does do debates. Give Ben Burgess credit. He does do debates. But Sam Cedar always wants to debate somebody with a much larger platform than he has while not having people on that have smaller platforms. So Sam Cedar would be in the same category. It's just that PragerU is significantly more important than Sam Cedar. So that's what we're dealing with right there. And Dennis Prager closes this exchange pretty well, in my opinion, by saying we shouldn't have a conversation about the debate because presumably we're having the debate right now. Oh, I have no doubt that there are a lot of people on the left that the the issue that I raised was people at the New York Times and people like you, for the for example, you pleasantly surprised me by doing this, to be perfectly honest. And by the way, I think proof of my theory is a piece that I read on some uh, left wing or progressive site just today about how angry many of your viewers are that you're having me on. Whereas I will tell you, I would get no such feedback from the right if I had a left per, a left wing person on my show. They would be thrilled. So uh, I, I still stand by my belief that in general, uh, the people certainly in the higher echelons of the left don't want to debate. But it's, it's, you know, it's probably not worth debating whether there would be such a debate. I presume we're having one now, yes, and yes. Uh, I'm glad we are. But Anna, of course, who cannot let it go, ends up undercutting her own premise by talking about the reasons why people on the left refuse to engage in debates. And then she, of course, smears Dave Rubin for no real reason, saying that he was bribed by people like Dennis Prager. And finally, we get into some kind of conversation that's about something other than the conversation about how this conversation doesn't typically happen. You guys know how I feel about people talking about conversations about conversations, but yet that is what the first five minutes of this conversation is wasted on. Well, look, uh, the left isn't a monolith. There's a lot of disagreement on the left. Uh, there's certainly a lot of disagreement on things that I say on this show on various issues, even when it comes to crime. Um, I'm sure you've noticed some of the backlash I've received in that regard as well. However, I will say there is a reason why the right wing tends to be more open to having these kinds of discussions and debates and the left wing gets a little uneasy about it. And it's because there has been this prevalence of prominent figures who identify as the left, right, or on the left, who then later start to, you know, cozy up to right wing figures and then it turns out that they completely move to the right wing because they're essentially paid to do it. They're used as tools by the right wing to essentially spew right wing talking points while purporting to still be on the left. In fact, Dave Rubin's a great example of that. Dave Rubin used to work with us. Now, before we get into the whole Dave Rubin thing, which by the way, I've actually discussed Dave Rubin and his relationship with the Young Turks on this channel before, I do want to point out Anna has an incredibly smug expression number one and number two and most importantly the whole idea that people who are not really on the left get paid to pretend they're on the left to have these conversations with conservatives should actually be proof positive to Dennis Prager's overall claim that actual people on the left don't want to have the debates. They don't want to have these conversations. So Anna Kasparian already all over the place, even in this pointless point about conversations that doesn't need to be in here. You could have cut this and left it on the editing room floor, but Anna decided that she wanted to take a shot at Dave Rubin because she's still mad that Dave Dave Rubin left the Young Turks, talked about the dysfunction of the Young Turks, and made a nice living doing so. And by the way, Dave Rubin, as Dennis Prager has pointed out, is on the right now, or he considers himself on the right now. He identified as someone on the left. He... Oh, Dave, Dave, yeah, go ahead. Forgive me, Adam. Dave Rubin made a video for Prager U why I left the left. Oh, I know. I, I, he, he does not, in fact, state to the world that he's still on the left. I, I don't know who you have in mind, so I, I can only address the one name that you gave. Dave Rubin acknowledges he's not on the left. It's interesting because if I recall correctly, you had a conversation with Dave Rubin and how incredibly important it was that he was engaging in these discussions with you, discussions with the right wing. And you, 
stated something very specific. I actually want to go to that video and I want to get your thoughts. Uh, maybe you can elaborate on what you meant in this video. Let's watch. So first and foremost, I do want to point out that it is a bit odd in terms of structure of a debate that one side is able to pull up clips and whatnot and basically can use all this preparation, a whole team behind Anna Kasparian, in order to engage in a simple conversation. This, again, goes to the overall point about how the left doesn't want to have a conversation unless it's insanely rigged on their part or just refuses to do so overall. I want you to continue to say you're, you're a liberal because you're yeah. you're of great use uh, to to good values. Well, don't worry, I'm not doing it for my, for your use no, of me. I'm doing, that. I'm doing it for myself. No, I no, no, you. no. Yeah. It's like Christians who say to me, you know, oh, we would love you to come to Christ, but you are so valuable to us as a Jew, and you defend us Christians. Yeah. And they're right. You are valuable in, in the best sense of the word because. The America needs people who are clearly a, 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 a liberal and who, and to be honest, and fall into the category of kosher as gay yeah. to say, hey, hello, the conservatives are not hate mongers. Hello, they should be heard. And maybe every so often you should read National Review right. or watch a PragerU video. That being said, if you address the substance of Dennis Prager's clip, he was saying that it's important for Dave Rubin to call himself a liberal, which is what he was calling himself at the time, more libertarian leaning than anything, because he doesn't want to flip him to the right, because it's good to get the same liberal perspective. This is distinguishing Dave Rubin from the left, talking about how he has value distinguished from the left, but is not exactly on the right. And a lot of people on the internet.com do this. They hold the centrist position or what they call the centrist position, and they make their case from that perspective. So it's interesting to a lot of people who have clearly chosen a side on what some of these people are going to break down on when it comes to your side or their side, depending on the issue. So that's what Dave Rubin was being told by Dennis Prager. He likes the fact that somebody who is a liberal gay person, Dave Rubin was an atheist at the time, is on the side of conservatives on a lot of these speech issues because the left went absolutely crazy on a lot of these speech issues. Remember, again, Dave Rubin at this time was more in the Sam Harris camp, and I'm talking about the Sam Harris versus the radical left in terms of Islam camp, not necessarily the Sam Harris, I hate Trump more than absolutely anything kind of camp. So Mr. Prager, you can understand why members of the left would feel a little uneasy when these discussions take place because usually it's a sign that someone on the left got lured in with uh, some billionaire cash like Dave Rubin did. And again, we're still talking about debates. We're still talking about conversations. We're not into the actual substance of the issue. And Anna is once again contradicting herself. She said that I was more honest than the New York Times in the open, and I'm here for the debate, and all these lefties want to debate. But when a lefty debates, everybody on the left thinks that they got lured in with billionaire cash in order to do so. So the left kind of has a stigma against conversation with people on the right. Oh my God, Dennis, you're 100% right. Anna Kasparian cannot help but concede this point to you, even though she's too inept to realize she's doing so. Usually it's a sign that someone on the left got lured in with uh, some billionaire cash like Dave Rubin did. And of course, Anna Kasparian has to throw in that Dave Rubin must have changed all of his positions due to billionaire cash. Again, we did a whole video on Dave Rubin changing his position and becoming more antagonistic against the Young Turks while he worked at the Young Turks. Obviously, the divide was based on how Cenk handled the whole Sam Harris thing, and that is evidenced by what you can see when Dave Rubin was still on the network. Link to that full video in the description of this video so you guys can check it out, because I actually bring all of the evidence with me into the conversation, and we go over all the different multiple ways that the Young Turks acknowledge that they were treating Dave Rubin really poorly while he worked there. So all that's going to be there you can check it out for yourself but just know that Anna Kasparian is throwing out smears oh, oh okay well see well that's an unfair statement I I don't accuse people on the left of having their positions because of money and I don't think you should do that with regard to conservatives and Dennis Prager is actually responding with the level of decency that Anna Kasparian is not able to handle because she's such a nasty warped person at this point in time uh, Alan Dershowitz has, has, is not a right winger, but Alan Dershowitz has said to me, uh, this Harvard professor is very well known, he's lost all his friends because he, he defended Donald Trump in court. He didn't even vote for Donald Trump, just merely defending his, his right to have a defense. 
was enough for him to lose his friends. Now, a lot of people don't like Alan Dershowitz because Alan Dershowitz was part of the Jeffrey Epstein defense team. He's a very prestigious lawyer, and a lot of people think that he is personally questionable. You can look into that for yourselves. I want this video to be monetized on youtube.com forward slash this video should be monetized. But the thing is, is I actually heard Alan Dershowitz speak at an event that I was attending, and during his speech at that event, Dershowitz made it absolutely clear that he was working on a book talking about how Hillary Clinton was innocent in the email scandal, and the only reason he wrote the Trump book is because Donald Trump ended up winning the presidency. So he was going to make the case as a defense attorney from a defense attorney's point of view for either person in terms of their presidency with the scandals that were attached to them going into office. He, like many people in the Harvard left-wing elite, thought Hillary Clinton was going to win. So originally, he was writing up all about how Hillary Clinton should not be prosecuted for the whole email scandal, and he ultimately ended up scrapping that idea in favor of a defense of Trump because he's a defense attorney and this is what the guy does. So so yeah, you can attack Alan Dershowitz in all the different ways that you want, but what you can't do is call him a right-wing conservative because he's just not. The, the assumption on the left is that if you're a conservative, you're a despicable human being. And th this is a perfect example. The only reason Dave Rubin would have done it was, f was for money. I, I don't know anybody on my side of the spectrum who holds their positions because of money. See, one of the things that I fundamentally agree with Dennis Prager on is that this is a useless conversation. Now, if you are going to ask me to put my own money on where the big money actually is, I would say that there are more big money donors on the left than there are on the right overall. And this is one of the reasons why 90 something percent of our media is left wing in this country because obviously the big money is backing it. That being said, there is conservative big money, but since conservative media represents such a smaller majority of media, that money can get focused on individual people. And it's very easy for the left to highlight somebody like the Koch brothers and then demonize that individual person while all of their big money donors are essentially hidden in the shadows and you can't really talk about them because they're so many of them. But this conversation is completely useless. Everybody here, including myself, gets paid to say the things that they say. Whether they get paid by their audience through the ad revenue on YouTube like I do, through Patreon, Subscribestar, and my new website join page like I do, or they get paid by the investment capital that was pumped into the Young Turks by Jeffrey Katzenberg, or their memberships, or their brand deals, or any of the other machinations to which they get revenue, or how Dennis Prager gets paid, everybody's being paid to say what they're saying. So really, you can say this person is being bribed, that person's being bribed, whatever, whatever, or you can actually focus on what they're saying and whether or not you can dispute it. Ann Coulter had the best quote of all time when people called her a grifter, saying that she was taking money and she doesn't actually believe the things that she was saying. She responded to those allegations by saying, if I'm being paid to say things that I don't believe, and I'm more successful when I'm not even saying my true beliefs than you are expressing your true beliefs, then you suck and maybe your side should pay somebody too. So yeah, I don't care about this or that allegation of who's being paid or whatever. It's whether or not you can dispute the facts in the case in an effective way, because if somebody's grifting, it should be really easy for you to take them down. But Anna Kasparian just wants to smear them because that's what the Young Turks does. Uh, there's a hell of a lot more money on the left anyway. Really? If you want to get really? money. Really? Yeah, oh, how, how is yeah, Prager who, you who funded? The Washington Post. How is Prager you funded? Washington Post. By, by by people on the internet and by wealthy donors. But uh, Prager, Prager, <laughs> Prager U does, the, is, is pittance compared to the money that is available just to BLM. Uh, well, how, much, how much money was given to Black Lives Matter uh, by the Ford Not Foundation by billionaire the donors. Oh, they no. certainly received quite a bit of money oh. from individ individuals who no, wanted no, to they, donate they to that cause. Anna Kasparian right there just lies. We all know Black Lives Matter, the organization, got millions of dollars from corporations. According to the Washington Post, 50 companies, the top 50 corporations, actually pledged $50 billion to put into racial equity. Now, the Washington Post 
breaks down this 50 billion and what they find out is that a lot of it is directed as loans to black businesses that prioritize them or homeowners about 45 billion but that still leaves 4.25 billion dollars in donations to racial equity causes which are of course left-wing nonsensical causes but sure this is small money donors there's not a big corporate siding with black lives matter that's totally not a thing that exists not to mention what would be classified as in-kind contributions where all of these corporations end up putting out support for them in order to solicit donations on behalf of individuals to their cause i mean amazon and netflix and all these streaming services have their own black section that they designated post the george floyd riots these companies also donated to different various blm organizations promised to hire more minorities instituted racially discriminatory policies and we've seen people like robin d'angelo ibram x kendi make a ton of money doing appearances at company events because the left wing is rolling in cash so anna can assert to the contrary but we all know how insane the speaking fees are for these left-wing people and by the way there's certainly right-wing people who make exorbitant speaking fees but they're not being paid by amazon google netflix and all these companies to come do talks and all that nonsense so anna you're just not being honest anna maybe you haven't figured out a way to monetize your nearly 20 year long career in a proper way and you should honestly be ashamed of your own poor behavior but in reality yes there's a ton of money on the left wing and it is name brand mainstream money now also another thing that you will notice in this debate is that the young turks like to do this thing where they throw out allegations throw out assertions and then try to move on to a different thing and i give dennis prager credit for not letting that happen and for each and every time they try to do this because they do this repeatedly saying if you're going to throw out an assertion you have to let me to respond to it otherwise we're not actually having a debate not not realizing maybe that the goal of Anna Kasparian and the Young Turks is to not actually have a debate. So Anna, not very happy that Dennis Prager is going to address her claim line for line. Okay. But if you think there's a lot of money on the left, I mean, you would be mistaken. But there I do want to move off of, this because there are actual wait, 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 topics, wait, 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 issues that are worth why. discussing. The, the richest, the richest zip codes vote Democrat. Mm -hmm. The wealth today in America is 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 disproportionately for uh, on behalf of Democrats on the left wing. That's either a fact or not. Anybody could look it up. So again, Dennis Prager just laying it out clearly and obviously and concisely. The richest zip codes in the United States of America vote Democrat. And by the way, they do contribute heavily to politicians. It's just a fact. And the idea that there's not billionaire money behind left wing media, Jeff Bezos legitimately bought the Washington Post. A bunch of left wing billionaires are funding all these different media startups. You have investment capital that fueled news agencies like vice or buzzfeed or vox all of these organizations which by the way are also backed by corporations some of them vice teamed up with hbo vox i believe teamed up with nbc it could be abc fact check me all you want in the comments so we see that over and over again that left-wing media typically has a large institutional backing so anna you're just wrong, and you're being funded by Jeffrey Katzenberg's media group, the former CEO of Disney, so you're double wrong and maybe even a bit misleading. If you think left-wing media has major billionaire donors, again, you'd sadly be mistaken. But the information regarding PragerU, which, by the way, hey. you're listed as an organization that's tax-exempt, correct? And you're not supposed to be talking about political issues. but. Last time I checked, PragerU yeah. talks about a lot of political issues. Anna is so nasty throughout the whole course of this debate, interview, whatever you want to call it. It's just amazing. Every single sentence comes with disdain and just bad attitude on the face in her tone of voice. And everything you can just see on Anna shows her angry and fury over Dennis Prager calmly talking to her and explaining to her how she's wrong point by point. So she just accused Dennis Prager of committing a nonprofit fraud. So if you're a nonprofit, you actually have to spend more than 51% of your spending on non political activity. And Prager University, Dennis Prager is a smart guy, definitely meets that requirement because one of the things that they'd like to do is basically educate educational work and this is what Dennis Prager is going to explain to Anna Kasparian who is accusing him of fraud right now with that nasty attitude and the way that Anna responds is just a perfect distillation of her character and we gotta go to it well then you haven't checked in a long time uh, for example we we never did a single video on Donald Trump 
and that's not exactly political. Uh, we just did a, uh, a, we put out a video a week. So we have 500 videos out about, and uh, we just put out one on Millard Fillmore. If you consider that political, Riveting. most people never heard of it. We're doing every single president. Did you catch that? So Dennis Brigger sets it up by saying we've never put out a video on Donald Trump because we don't cover politics. And we put out a video a week. We have over 500 videos. You could check them out. Most of them don't fall into the category of electoral politics or even talking about politics. They have an educational background. We even did a video recently about Millard Fillmore. And then Anna Kasparian, being the snarky, rude, horrible harpy that she is, says riveting sarcastically while Dennis Prager is talking. We just put out one on Millard Fillmore. If you consider that political, Riveting. most people never heard of it. We're doing every single president. Riveting. Most people, Riveting. most people, Riveting. most people. Anna Kasparian asked him why he's allowed to cover politics. Dennis Prager is refuting her wrong allegations of Dennis Prager committing a fraud as a nonprofit. And Anna is being super snarky, like, I wouldn't want to watch that. I don't want to watch your historical videos. I'm not interested. Riveting. Re real nice, Anna. Real good showing on your behalf during this conversation. You accuse somebody of essentially committing tax fraud, they defend themselves, and then you're like, Puh, I don't want to watch that. That's not the Prager U videos that Media Matters clips up and makes more digestible for me because I'm too lazy to watch a five minute video in its whole context. Many of our videos, probably at least half, are purely educational. So to tell you about every president, for example, Democrat or Republican, by some noted historian, uh, it's a caricature of, of Prager U. Uh, for you to say that we are largely political. Prager it U describes itself as conservative. Like it's a yes, conservative I mean, take, conservative, which okay. by the nature of it being conservative is political. Yeah. But listen, it is what it is. No, no, I, no, I wait, do wait, want to wait, move on wait, to wait, other issues wait, because there are actual know, political issues make, that you're here to discuss. With all, you can't make a point and then not let me respond. Okay, Forgive go ahead. Me. So again, Anna Kasparian throws out a stupid statement. Maybe she has some self-awareness and realizes that saying you're conservative makes you inherently political is a stupid statement. So she tries to move on. And then Dennis Prager explains to her the difference between having a conservative conservative worldview and pushing conservative or Republican politics and Anna Kasparian really doesn't have a response and we're 10 minutes in and all we have are smears being thrown by Anna Kasparian being rebuffed one by one by Dennis Prager in an excellent way might I add and Anna just trying to dodge to the next thing because she's doing this not to have a legitimate conversation but to look good for her lefty base and her lefty friends that are going to be like wow Anna did a great job if I snip out just this this one clip of the conversation, Anna's going to look like a genius. She's going to look like she's owning Dennis Prager in this debate. Yes, you can be conservative, for example, socially and not specifically. Po politically generally means vote Republican. We don't tell people to vote anyway in any in any direction. But yes, we do believe that America is the finest country ever founded. If that makes us political, we're political. So I want to move on to other statements you've made, other issues. You know, you do focus on culture war related issues, uh, your distaste, the hatred for secularism. I want to start off without putting words in your mouth. So I just want to laugh because Anna Kasparian says, oh, you do a lot of social issue talk. You have a distaste. No, you know what? Hatred for secularism. Now, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but we're going to cut to a clip after I just put words in your mouth. Uh, your distaste. The Hatred for secularism. I want to start off without putting words in your mouth. Jesus, Anna, do better. Do better in your life. Look at yourself in the mirror. Watch this video. Watch my analysis because I will give you a better breakdown of what you're doing than you can observe with your own eyes. And do better next time, Anna. You can do it. I believe in you. You've moved a little bit on crime. You're still 80% wrong, but you've moved to 20% right from 0%. So I give you credit there. You could do better in the future, Anna. Please, I believe in you. Show video of something you said just yesterday on the uh, Dennis Prager show that I thought was fascinating. So let's take a look at that and we'll discuss. The computer sticker phenomenon is crazy. It was actually one of the biggest what, shocks. What does I that had. mean? What does that mean? On your computer right here, people, instead of just having a, a blank oh, back, oh, I see. They would so messages. On, yes. It would either and be. And what was the common message? I heart women or um, just the, the female sign, you know, the circle. And Wait, the I heart women on a woman's computer? Yes. All of this is proof to me that women need men. These women are manless. They may have hookups, but they're manless. 
And it, they might have been fatherless, too. Ending with my generation, I would say in ending with the, the baby boomers, but on t- certainly through then, a young woman thought a lot about, do I have a boyfriend? Mm-hmm. What will my wedding be like? What will I wear? Who will be there? Who will the guy be? That is That, I believe, is healthy and normal for a young woman. Mm-hmm. It's a good thing. That has been knocked out by, by the, the feminist left. And if you think about it, you're, you're, you're a weak female. So if you can't tell, Anna Kasparian setting the stage for Dennis Prager has nothing of value to argue with Dennis Prager. She pulls up a clip of Dennis making fun of girls who put the laptop stickers on because we all know that these people that have to advertise everything on their laptop stickers, whether political or not political, really don't have much of a personality. So this whole blanket, I love women, women power, girl power on the back of my laptop so you could see it at Starbucks is pretty embarrassing. It is pretty hilarious. So Dennis Prager takes some shots and Anna Kasparian doesn't like it. So she's going to drag this out and say not all a bunch of times. And that's going to add no value to anybody's lives. But we're going to go over it so you don't think I skipped anything. So fascinating statements there. Uh, You seem to believe that women who love themselves, who love women, who feel confident about being women tend to be manless and lonely. Do you genuinely think that? So again, of all the things to talk about Dennis Prager, somebody that the Young Turks has made multiple videos on, somebody that they say is pushing the religious rights takeover of the country, enabling fascism, indoctrinating children, this is what they bring into the conversation. On top of that, notice the Chiron below this that's trying to make you, the dumb people out there in the audience, who can't even follow this conversation well enough, even though you're an active listener of the Young Turks, likely if you're watching this, where they say Dennis Prager calls independent women lonely no the people who put laptop stickers on who have to virtue signal about this that or the other are likely lonely maybe that's a prejudgment oh my god how dare i how dare dennis prager but in reality that is not an example of confidence when you have to display all this nonsense you are clearly in my opinion covering up from some form of deficiency that you have now i didn't see anna kasparian say that i go to starbucks sit there with my feminism plus stickers on my laptop but she says i'm super confident and independent and i'm married to a bartender so take that dennis prager do you think i'm manless and lonely i I, I I think women rock i said that in general women need men and i've said a thousand times that in general men need women the fact that that's controversial is a statement about what's happened to our culture But you got triggered by a story about women who have laptop stickers that just say positive things about women. You immediately, your mind immediately went to, they might have daddy issues and they're lonely, they need men. I wanna yeah. understand your thinking. Like, okay, what, how, did, how do you get to that, that. conclusion? Uh, it's, it's, if you had if a heterosexual man, with 97% of men are heterosexual, with a sticker, I love men, you, you, would, you would wonder why. Why don't men have stickers, I love men, but you think it's perfectly normal and, and a non-issue that women would have stickers, I love women. What, what is the point of, of saying that? The, the, it is worthy of a question. What, and I don't think that 50 years ago, this would have been, obviously there were no laptops then, but I don't think it would have been a common sentiment. I don't understand why women would need to announce I love women if they're not a gay woman. You tell me, I'm curious. What, is, what does yeah. that signify? So right there, Dennis Prager actually rebuffs Anna Kasparian incredibly well. He talks about how what he's getting from this laptop sticker, which is not a common thing that he remembers from the past. It was not common in American history for people to just throw all these stickers of political messages, especially empty political slogans like I love women and the stupid feminist fist just so people could see them. And he's saying that is worthy of a question. That is worthy of a discussion. And I 100% agree with him. One of the things that I find so obnoxious about our society to this day is the fact that we're obsessed with chitter chatter, we're obsessed with talking nonsense, and it impacts not just feminists in Starbucks drinking their soy latte, but every aspect of our lives and maybe in ways that you didn't even imagine. I mean, think about a boxing match and how it goes down today. You have the stare down, you have the crap talking, you have all this song and dance that's not about the fight 
in the lead up to the fight and all of it is worthless. If you go look at heavyweight champions back in the day, you know, when boxers actually used to fight the best boxer when they were in their prime in order to get the heavyweight championships, these people would not be taunting all the time. They wouldn't be chatting. They didn't have to do these embarrassing I'm about to kiss stare downs that we see over and over again. It was just to the point. They were going to work. They had to do a job and that's the way sports was. In fact, Major League Baseball has this whole campaign called Let the Kids Play that wants to introduce more taunting and more annoying behavior into baseball in response to our modern culture wanting this nonsense. So yeah, it is important to point out that we've become obsessed with chitter chatter. We've been obsessed with stupid talk that is saying nothing. And I think Dennis Prager extrapolating that from the laptop is totally fine. And I would actually go one step further as I did in my explanation of why this is annoying. But Anna Kasparian decides to reach in her well of stupid, pointless, irrelevant, why are we even having this conversation responses to throw something at Dennis Prager to seek out a win that she's so desperately in need of. Well, I mean, listen, as an individual who values free speech and freedom of expression, I think that women and men can have whatever laptop stickers they want. And uh, the reason why there is a difference between... So Anna Kasparian skips over the point and says, you know, as somebody who's in favor of free speech, you should be in favor of people having whatever laptop stickers they want. Do you really think Dennis Prager's position, and by the way, he says it really quickly right after that, showing you how stupid this point is, is that women can't have these laptop stickers, or is he reacting to the laptop stickers? Is he having a conversation about the speech that they're saying? Is he responding to speech with speech? But instead, Anna Kasparian tries to make it a free speech issue. This is somebody who will be on board for Democratic Party-directed censorship on social media, saying that's not a free speech issue, but Dennis Prager criticizing laptop stickers that were presented to him on his show is somehow a violation of free speech. Then she goes into the women are oppressed and women didn't have the right to vote for a very long time in this country. Again, they've had it for over 100 years. The example that Dennis Prager gave men and women in regard to those laptop stickers is because, I mean, when you really think about it, women didn't have the right to vote for a very long time. Was women not having all these stickers and all these empty messages 50 years ago, which means the women would be closer to when they didn't have the right to vote by 50 years. And it's a relatively new phenomenon that we've seen the last 10, maybe 15 years, this form of empty expression. So that's what he's talking about, Anna. So the idea that, oh, women as far away from not having the right to vote as humanly possible in the United States of America doing this is due to the fact that they didn't have the right to vote but all throughout american history we did not see this similar behavior is a bit odd there have been equality issues when it comes to men and women now we're, we're getting a lot better that's for sure but first of all i don't agree that women have laptop stickers that just simply say i love women it's probably some sort okay, of empowering statement for I, women I but that. that doesn't mean that doesn't translate to oh i'm a lonely manless person well, and i should enough. go back to okay. the good old days when women sat around thinking about whether or not they're going to find a husband and get married you seem well, to why, push why, your why, values why, why, and your why, views why, on relationships onto other people. And what I'm trying to get you to understand is rather than making generalizations about what's best for women, maybe allow women, allow people to live their lives as they see fit. So Anna goes on this whole rant about how women need to determine their own future. Everybody needs to determine their own future. And again, this is coming from somebody who's becoming ever more socialist and wants more thuggish control of your day-to-day -day life. Anna Kasparian wants to raise taxes. She wants to regulate you out of business. She wants to make decisions for you. And she thinks if you disagree with her, then you've been indoctrinated by propaganda to make you not a communist. That's what Anna Kasparian thinks of. So when she talks about her opinion, she's talking about inflicting force on the general population. So she can't understand Dennis Prager giving his opinion and giving his advice. And you can see this when Dennis Prager responds to her and she gives a smug answer among many of her other smug answers coupled with her smug face. Have a belief system right. as they so, see fit. Okay. Why do you feel the so need I to have... force your beliefs onto other people? Well, Go ahead. Well, first of all, okay, I don't understand the word force. I mean, the, the I mean, what, Anna? What are you talking about? Dennis Prager is not advocating for forcing women to do anything. He's commenting on laptop stickers, not saying we should ban them. He's talking about why they exist. So you could go, I mean, 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 I mean,
<laughs> all smug all you want, but in reality, in actuality, you have no point. And Dennis is about to explain that offering your opinion is not force, you buffoon. If you think that if I offer my opinion, I'm forcing people to adopt it is a bit odd. You don't believe that make, America I, should be secular. So what does wait, that wait, mean? Wait, 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 wait. So another thing that you'll notice about this conversation, and I haven't really been pointing it out, is that every time Anna Kasparian is dead wrong, and embarrassingly so, like she was there, she accused Dennis Prager of trying to force people into a belief system. Dennis Prager said, I'm offering my opinion. The fact that you think that's force is ridiculous. Anna goes, I mean... I mean, I mean, as a response, not adding anything to the conversation. The fact that you think that if I offer my opinion, I'm forcing people to adopt it is a bit odd. You don't believe that America I should be secular. But if you notice right there, she's pivoting from topic to topic. So now she's saying you don't want America to be secular. Now, if you were a betting man, if you had to throw your own money on the line, do you think that Dennis Prager, a religious Jewish person, wants a forced Christian nation in the United States of America? Or he's just suggesting that a religious population is better than a non-religious population based on his belief system. Where do you think this is going to go? Where do you think Anna Kasparian is going to go? And do you think where Anna Kasparian goes is anywhere connected to reality? Please let me know in the comments, even though we all know Anna's going to fail right here. So what does that wait, mean? Wait, 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 wait. L let me finish that point. Sure, go ahead. I believe that I have the right, as you do, to offer people thoughts on what might be a better and happier life for them. I've written a book on happiness, which which uh, has uh, touched a lot of lives if one wants to read the reviews on Amazon. I believe, again, that in general, of course, every generalization has exceptions. Most women will have a better and happier life with a good man, and most men will have a happier and better life with a good woman. I don't know why that is controversial to state. All I know is that having adopted the view that career is more important than marriage has led to more depressed women than anything that preceded it. There are more young women today depressed than at any time in American history. This is in the New York Times. This is not from a right wing source. I think feminism has made m women more miserable than happy. So again, Dennis Prager laying his case out in a concise, direct way, not letting Anna Kasparian pivot. He notices that she's trying to change the topic because Anna just said something dumb that Dennis Prager is trying to force people in order to live this lifestyle. And Dennis Prager is talking about how he's written a book on living a happier life. This is something that he's interested in. And these are the values that he's found throughout his life that promote happiness. That's what he's talking about. He brings up depression rates, other examples. He talks about how these come from left-wing sources, not right-wing sources. And he does think that's notable. Now, whether or not you agree with Dennis Prager or not, I leave that up to you. But the idea that he's forcing his opinion on anybody is absurd. That's not what's happening. So I'm going to address that in just a second. But I want to address what you said prior to that very quickly. So listen, I don't have a problem with someone saying women are likely to be happier in life if they find a partner to share their life with. I don't think that that's a controversial statement. What is controversial is you seeming to imply that feeling confident or supportive toward women and being happy single or in a relationship that it's mutually exclusive like you can't be supportive of women and have a happy life like the weird connection that you tried to make there makes no sense what was the final well, thing that I, you I, said so again anna kasparian totally missing the point anna kasparian not understanding what's going on dennis prager clearly was not saying that independent strong women are unhappy he was talking about how this is a sign of unhappiness and this idea that you have to constantly project strength is a sign of weakness. I also want to point out that there was a cut right there. So there's a cut, and then Anna Kasparian is asking him to say something. So there's a portion of this conversation that was cut out from the upload to YouTube. Weird connection that you tried to make there makes no sense. What was the final well, thing that you said? You can see it right there. You can hear it in the audio if you listen carefully. And I can only imagine that this was done for reasons of Dennis Prager giving Anna Kasparian an answer that she could not handle and her trying to backtrace to the topic. So nice job, Young Turks, editing around Dennis's answer right there. I'm curious to see what you left on the cutting room floor. Very interesting how you have to have your own clips, your own prep, have it on your own show, and have it hacked up by your editor editors before you're ready to upload it onto the internet and you try to pretend like we can't see it. Have you considered some of the 
economic issues within this country that don't really give women a choice as to whether or not they should yes, focus on a that, career? that's a very real issue. I fully acknowledge that. That if you don't have a career to fall back on and there's a divorce, uh, that, that you're entirely right. That is not the same thing as saying career is going to give you a great deal of meaning and happiness like a marriage will. So then they get into whether or not you can afford to support a family where there's only one breadwinner. Obviously, Anna Kasparian says that, no, you can't. It's definitely impossible. And Dennis moves on from this portion of the conversation to talk about how even in upper class women who could definitely afford to stay home, they seem to overemphasize the career and he thinks that's the problem. So right here, you have a situation where they're not really disagreeing with one another on whether or not something is affordable. It's just Anna Kasparian is exaggerating the unaffordability of having somebody be a stay-at-home mom, and Dennis Prager is pointing out and trying to zero in not on what they agree on, but what they disagree on, which is why upper-class women are also super career-motivated as well. If they're in a marriage where both of them make insanely good salaries, or the man makes an insanely good salary, the woman doesn't typically stay home. She goes out and works, even if she's making far less money, because there is an over emphasis on career you can go watch that section of it it's not really super contentious and not interesting plus fair use guidelines mean i gotta leave some stuff on the cutting room floor from the debate but that's the nature of that conversation the reason that many women not all but perhaps most even are are working is not just economic especially in the certainly in the upper class upper middle class and even part of the middle class it is because they believe that their self-worth derives more from work than it does from family. If a girl got up at a, in a high school or college class, let's say a, a professor or a teacher said, so uh, women, I mean, to the extent that they can now say that, because you can't say boys and girls in many elementary schools, because we're told by your side that sex is not binary. But let's say they say, we'd like the women in this class, please stand up and tell us what your, your vision for your life is. If a girl got up in a college class and said, you know, to be honest, my greatest hope in life is for a good marriage and to make a family, she would be regarded as almost a freak. Would she? I mean, you, what is that based on? Yes, what evidence would. do you have to back that up? So here you have Dennis Prager making a statement about the nature of the culture in the United States of America, where if somebody was asked a girl in a school K through 12, what they want to do when they grow up, and their response was, I want to find a good husband and start a family, how that would not be looked upon well, and I believe he actually said university, not K-12, through or as well as somebody saying whatever their career ambitions were. And Anna Kasparian can't refute this point. She knows it's true. We all understand that our culture has shifted well away from housewives and all that, and we are expecting women to go and have careers, and people kind of look down on women that want to be housewives and want to be taken care of rather than have their own career. But instead of conceding this point, which is not a big issue at all, Anna Kasparian demands data or studies or some kind of sample to prove this to be true, as if Dennis Prager points this out. The professor is putting in the reaction into a computer so we can see it. And Dennis Prager doesn't belabor this point. Anna Kasparian is being incredibly uncharitable and intentionally so. She's being obtuse in this moment. So Dennis is like, fine, we can disagree. It's fine. I would way rather have a clear disagreement than us find common ground because common ground is not that valuable. And I appreciate him for that. But it is notable how dishonest Anna was being and how Anna tried to shift this into persecution. I, I live in the real world so do uh, i there is okay and you believe that if a girl got up and said that she would be regarded with the same respect as the girl who said I, i'd like to be a physicist i believe that most normal people are too busy thinking about how they need to survive and are less concerned about the aspirations of individuals in their classroom and so if you have data backing up that women who want to be homemakers are persecuted in this country. I'd love to see that data. And I wouldn't agree I with that I persecution. Persecute. And Dennis Prager's like, no, it's not persecution. We're talking about a shift in the culture. And Anna won't let that go because she views the world as victims and victimizers because that's part of her leftist worldview. And she's projecting that onto Dennis Prager. What you find out throughout the course of this conversation is that people on the left, like Anna Kasparian, are incapable of having a good faith conversation. And Anna Kasparian knows very little about the right 
right, who she talks about all day and every day and complains about their motivations, their desires, etc. Because she keeps talking about Dennis Prager trying to force women into marriages and all these other untrue things that any objective observer would understand just by the words that he's saying he's not trying to do. And so if you have data backing up that women who want to be homemakers are persecuted in this country, I'd love to see that they're data. And I wouldn't agree I with that I persecution. Never said they're persecuted. You All seem I said to apply that they're they, being they victimized be by wanting to be homemakers, and I just don't buy it. Okay, fine, so good. This is a classic example of what I say on my radio show. I prefer clarity to agreement. You think that a girl who got up in a college class and said my my, fer my most fervent dream is to have a happy marriage and a family will be regarded with the same respect as a girl who said I'd like to be a physician or a physicist. We differ, perfect. Okay. All right, I, and again, if you have data backing up what you're saying, then I'm happy to admit well, I'm wrong. Data? We, the teachers don't do this and, and then send it to a computer. So we, you're just declaring, world, you're declaring, you're making up world. stories about how women are no, treated no, no, in the classroom no, they, and we're just supposed to buy it? Okay. You, we're, we're each giving the perception of reality that we have. Again, Anna Kasparian, totally pathetic in this moment. So you're just declaring, you're just saying that this is how women are treated. You're making up stories. Anna, weren't you saying that women who put those cheesy stickers on their laptop are actually super empowered and independent women? Isn't your Chiron just you making up stories? This is a conversation about our perceptions in the culture. Anna is denying this. By the way, Anna looks down on women who vote the wrong way. If you don't think she looks down on women who stay at home to be housewives you're crazy she just doesn't want to admit it because there is no extension of charitability that is acceptable on the left as Anna Kasparian has laid out earlier on in this conversation talking about how the perception from the left of lefties talking to right-wingers is that they're being paid off in order to do so. So Anna's like, you're just making up stories. I don't understand it. I, but, but what, what are you even talking about? There's no way in a university people are more career-oriented and they would look down on somebody who just wants to be a housewife. That's not possible. I can't concede that point in good faith because I'm Anna Kasparian and I think saying data and demanding a study is a good debate tactic. Not every perception of reality has a database. Otherwise, you're, one is a functional moron if one cannot make conclusions about life without data. Now, I know Dennis Prager didn't call Anna Kasparian a functional moron, but it's nice to assume that he did, and I'm all here for it because Anna Kasparian is playing the fool. She's playing ignorant. She's playing stupid when it comes to giving any points in charity to Dennis Prager, especially a point like this that doesn't matter, especially something that Anna could counter if she was so desirous about how it's much better that we look at women as independent economic agents rather than people that are expected to settle down and form families. Anna could have done any of those things. She decided not to. She decided to be uncharitable. Charitable. So functional moron, I think, is a decent label for this portion of Anna Kasparian's performance in this debate. Okay. All right. So let's move on to uh, right-wing violence. Following the Buffalo supermarket shooting, which of course was inspired by a belief in a conspiracy theory that whites are being replaced with minorities in this country purposely to keep Democrats in power, uh, you felt the need to kind of downplay right-wing extremism in this country. And you said, quote, this man represents such an infinitesimally small segment of the white population. Now, while that statement might be literally true, I don't think that the white population in America mostly consists of domestic terrorists, so I agree with you on that. It seems like you kind of want to brush aside the very real problem we're having in this country with political violence, politically motivated violence, and I want to give you a few other examples. For instance, the Southern Poverty Law Center did a poll and found that seven out of 10 Republican voters believe in that white replacement conspiracy theory. Are you concerned about that at all? So two things. One, Anna Kasparian is talking about political violence in the United States of America and not bringing up the Black Lives Matter riots that she supported, $2 billion in damages, almost 30 people dead, Antifa, an organization that she supported, a bunch of instances of violence, you can find them online. She focuses on one specific instance to label that right wing political violence and then she jumps to a poll where she says that the right wing 70 percent of them believe in the great replacement conspiracy theory but the thing is Anna Kasparian actually did a video on this at the time she did it with Jenk and while Jenk said that this poll was proof of racism Anna Kasparian back then had a much more nuanced take on what the poll actually said and talked about how she might actually vote 
in the same camp in that poll based on the wording of it. Let me play that clip for you right there. Now, look, uh, the YouGov poll is terrifying, but I, I do have one note of caution, right? Because for me, the real question is, do they believe that this is a conspiracy, like something's being intentionally done to make this happen? Or are they just looking at what's happening to demographics in the country and they're noticing that, yeah, the white population is getting smaller because there's interracial marriage, uh, there are immigrants, of course. Uh, it, it, there's a difference between acknowledging demographic shifts versus thinking there's some crazy manipulated like strategy to replace white people, right? Because okay, okay. do you get the point that I'm trying to make? Like. Look, I remember doing a show for Fusion back in 2016, where we were specifically talking about how the demographic, we were celebrating it, we didn't think it was a bad thing, obviously, that you know, uh, the Trump support was like the last gasp of like white America, right? Yeah, yeah. I remember talking about that. So, like, right, yeah. so like if we were to answer the, this poll, the way that it's being phrased, right? Like. It's demonstrably true, but it's not asking you if it's a good thing or a bad thing. Do you get what I'm saying? So yeah, this whole conversation is premised on a lie where Anna Kasparian acknowledges that she likely would have voted the same way as these 7 out of 10 Republicans and how it's not necessarily indicative of them buying into this conspiracy theory portion of the reality that's happening. And Anna also talks about how she supported this because she believes herself that this will lead to Democratic Party political victories and the country moving more left wing in the future. Look, I remember doing a show for Fusion back in 2016 where we were specifically talking about how the demographic, and we were celebrating it. We didn't think it was a bad thing, obviously. This is all laid out by Anna Kasparian in that other video just to give you an idea about how bad faith she's being right here. Right now, we have had, I believe, two million illegal immigrants, and the Democratic president of the United States has opened our border. It, it was, there was attempt to close the border to illegal immigration. So I will ask you, and I, I mean this is not even as a challenge, I'm curious, why do you think people on the left want millions of people to come in legally or illegally? Well, I love the way that Dennis Prager asked this question. I love the way that he responded to Anna Kasparian, and Anna has no good response to it, which just shows you how effective Dennis was. Dennis talks about how there's a mass of people moving to the United States of America. He says either illegally or legally doesn't matter, and he asks, why do you think people on the left, people in the Democratic Party, are in favor of this? And the reason why is because there's a belief on the left and in the Democratic Party that mass immigration will lead to electoral victories in the future. Where we were specifically talking about how the demographic, and we were celebrating it, we didn't think it was a bad thing, obviously. There's a book, we talked about it, I believe it came out in 2004 called the new emerging democratic majority or the new democratic majority i forget the title i'll put it up on screen but i'm sure if you search for something related to that you can find this book that documents this phenomenon i talked about on this channel multiple different times how npr of the new york times all these left-wing outlets call this the browning of america and they celebrate it so all we have here in terms of great replacement and the browning of america is different marketing the republicans call it something or the right wing because not all all Republicans even are aware of this or believe in this. They call it one thing that has a negative connotation to it. And Anna Kasparian, where we were specifically talking about how the demographic, and we were celebrating it. We didn't think it was a bad thing, obviously. As she admits, is celebrating it because she believes that this mass of people coming into the United States of America will lead to her political party's winning. So essentially, she's trying to disenfranchise current voters by adding in new people in order to make their votes less effective and have those new people vote for her priorities. This is what Anna Kasparian is in favor of. This is what she stated that she's in favor of and watch her try to weasel out of answering this question because she has no answer for this question Anna Kasparian has promoted the browning of America multiple different times but if you call it the great replacement theory then all of a sudden you can deny it you can deflect from it and you can pretend it's an evil right-wing conspiracy theory and by the way I am aware that some people say that it's the Jews that are behind it yes that's nonsensical it's obvious political strategy from the Democratic Party shocker Republicans and Democrats do things to help them win elections in the future, and they don't do things that they don't think will help them win elections in the future. Well, let's first discuss uh, the inaccuracies in your statement. Number one, there is there are legal means to immigrate into the United States. So, for instance, the 
asylum seekers who are being used as political pawns by people like okay. uh, Texas Governor Greg Abbott, I'm not done, or Florida's Governor Ron DeSantis. They came into this country seeking asylum, meaning they are here legally and they are awaiting a federal judge, a, an immigration judge, okay. to make a decision so about their asylum status. So first of all, Dennis Prager clearly and concisely, and I thank him for this, pointed out that there are problems not just with illegal immigration, but with legal immigration. But Anna Kasparian shifted, like the NPC that she is, to talking about how all of the people that are pouring into the southern border are doing it legally because after they're caught by Border Patrol, they say, actually, Border Patrol person, even though I'm trying to sneak into your country, I'm really an asylum seeker because that is treated as a loophole in the United States of America and that delays your deportation and again if this was about asylum if this was about finding a safe country for these people to be and they passed through about six or seven countries why was the young Turks why was Anna Kasparian against Trump's remain in Mexico policy which basically says if you're fleeing from a country because you're afraid of getting killed or whatever reason that you're legitimately seeking asylum, then you have to apply for asylum in the other countries that you stop over in between, because if the issue is safety, then you would got to go to the next safest country, not just try to pile into the United States of America. Anna Kasparian was not in favor of that. People said Trump was doing unconstitutional nonsense, even though that probably is the single most sensible policy ever instituted by the Trump administration, and it is undeniable again if the issue is i'm not safe in my own country that you should be applying to each and every country along the way to the united states before you get into the united states okay so, so the idea the that the border that the is millions, open and wait, people are just millions? pouring in illegally is inaccurate yes, no it is accurate no it's okay, inaccurate good. so there's a perfect example of where we differ and there's no reconciling either you're right or i'm right either millions are coming in illegally but whom you are calling legal because they're all seeking asylum. Do I hear you correctly? We have this a system a in place for asylum illegal. seekers. So it's are you really, are you so saying that we should do away with that system? And if you are saying that, then it would require members of Congress to pass legislation that reforms our immigration system. But I mean, I think you'll agree with the statement. Members of Congress have no interest in passing any legislation. Look at how Anna Kasparian is just trying her absolute best to get off this topic. She's like, we require immigration reform to get on this system if you want the asylum system done away with. No, what Dennis Berger is saying and what we all know is that these people are abusing the asylum system because if you get caught by border patrol, but you say you're seeking asylum, guess what? You get longer in the United States. We have to wait for a judge. And a lot of times under Biden, by the way, and under Obama, you get released into the interior of the United States pending your approval. So yeah, that is an abuse of the asylum system. That is why the Remain in Mexico policy was instituted to correct that abuse. But Anna Kasparian doesn't want to talk about that. She doesn't want you to think about that too much because she's virtue signaling and remember this is all a distraction from Dennis Prager's point about how the reason the Democratic Party is pro-immigration is because they believe it will help them electorally which Anna when she's in favor of it calls the browning of America but when she's against it she calls the great replacement conspiracy theory the fact that Disney will not even allow people uh, at the at, at their amusement parks to say boys and girls anymore gives you an idea of how sick they have become in the wokeness of this non-binary evil. And that I do believe is evil. To tell little children, you, are, you, you don't know if you're a boy or a girl until you decide. Do you think that's healthy? So they end up moving from immigration to corporations and Dennis Prager brings up Disney not saying boys and girls when they're introducing people at their amusement parks in order to cater to this fringe minority, the non-binaries and the parents who force their kids to be non-binaries for political purposes. And Anna Kasparian ends up completely losing her focus and jumping to teachers trying to defend teachers because we all know that it's far worse what's going on in the classroom because unlike Disney World, the public schools are funded directly by your tax dollars and there are laws that prohibit you from not sending your kids to school. I think it's unhealthy think to it's spend the amount of time you girl. spend in judging decisions that parents make about their own children. I think it's none of your business. I don't think it's anyone's business and schools are not doing anything close to what the right wing is describing. So Anna says the schools are not doing anything like you're saying. Let's be clear. The schools are doing far, far worse. What is being posted by Liz 
of TikTok often is teachers, in their own words, talking about how they're infusing wokeness and left-wing politics into their classrooms. I did a series before this was a super popular topic for the David Horowitz Freedom Center, the Stop K-12 Indoctrination series, where I talked about different instances of this indoctrination, was one of the first people to cover Drag Queen Story Hour, being funded by the taxpayer in the public schools. And yes, it is happening. It's been happening. They're using the public schools to indoctrinate you. Check out my videos before this was a trend going over this, and you will learn clearly that this is not something that became an issue for electoral reasons recently. This is something that has been an issue for a very long time in the United States of America. I mean, it is amazing because you talk about Alan Dershowitz, who had written a column in the New York Times about how it should be okay to have sex with underage girls, okay? Uh, you don't call him a groomer, but you'll call our educators who have have done nothing wrong just want to create an environment that's welcoming to all students you'll call them groomers but you'll defame them I, as some sort of sexual predators groomers. and it's unacceptable sick, just being clear groomers. about that I've never called them groomers you have the wrong guy so i don't know the nature of alan dershowitz op-ed at the new york times i could look it up but i'm honestly not going to right now at this moment if he wrote it depending on what he wrote because remember he was defending jeffrey epstein so he probably wrote out maybe his defense of jeffrey epstein depending on the age of the person that we're talking about then it actually might not be as bad as Anakis Barron is putting forward, but I have heard stories about Dershowitz not being a good guy and all that, but Dennis Prager responds to this in a very good way where he says, I'm not the one going out there calling groomers, saying that this is sick behavior and it is a denial of reality that's going on in our public schools. Now, Anna, who jumped to this topic because she was terrified about the non-binary and she knows what's going on in the public schools from Disney, a criticism of Disney, is saying they're just trying to create a welcoming environment. They're just trying to create a welcoming environment because the left knows that unless they force their ideology onto children, then they're they're not going to have success in the future. They're trying to indoctrinate the next generation so they can capture the next generation. You'll defame them as some I, sort I of sexual predators, groomers. and it's I unacceptable. Sick, Just being clear groomers. about that. I've never called them groomers. You have the wrong guy. But a teacher that has the kids in, in uh, kindergarten attend a drag queen story hour to see a guy in, in a dress uh, dancing erotically in front of them, those teachers are, are what we would have called 10 years ago sick. So Dennis Prager makes a clear and obvious case that this drag queen story out of these drag shows for all ages that are going on in our schools, that are going on in public places, are inappropriate. Anna Kasparian, you could just see in her face, just not happy about being called out about what she endorses. But let's see what level of stupid response that Anna Kasparian is going to go with. Is she going to go with A, acknowledging the reality, B, defending this on the merits, or C, attacking donald trump because orange man bad but a teacher that has the kids in, in uh, kindergarten attend a drag queen story hour to see a guy in, in a dress uh, dancing erotically in front of them those teachers are are what we would have called 10 years ago sick they are depriving children of sexual innocence and if that's not a sin on the left the left needs to do a lot of introspection. I would love for you to apply standards like that to the former president of the United States, who you supported, who you endorsed. You have completely minimized some of the scandals that he was involved in, including play, paying hush money to uh, adult entertainers uh, he had cheated on what his pregnant with wife with. Children? I'm bringing that up. But anyway, let me bail out of this conversation. Anna, what the hell are you talking about? Donald Trump cheats on his wife. Therefore, it's okay for kindergartners to have strip shows, drag strip shows, in the public schools paid for by your taxpayer dollars. Therefore, all those videos are justified. And Dennis Prager is the hypocrite because he's okay with the president who all the kids look up to because he's the leader of the country. Once again, I just want to point out, the president is not the leader of the country. This is Anna Kasparian's bend the knee to the state level of thinking. The president is the head of one branch of the federal government. That is it. That is all. If your kid looks up to the president, that is on you and your bad parents. Parent. You should be providing your own example to your kid, not looking for examples in politics of all places. But Anna Kasparian is pathetic. She looks up to politicians. She sucks up to politicians. That's who she is internally. If she had a kid, she would tell them to bend the knee to Obama, bend the knee to Hillary Clinton, bend the knee to Bernie Sanders, because that's who Anna Kasparian has always been. That's who the left has always been. They always look for authoritarian guidance because that's who they are to their core. So they think everybody else in the 
the world are like that. When I was a kid, I didn't know who the president was. I didn't watch him on TV or anything like that. We're talking about kindergartners, by the way, experiencing these drag shows. So, Anna, you have no point. You have no counterpoint. This is pathetic. You're pathetic. Because what, you have this weird adult? standard when it what comes to our educators, to but no standards this? when it comes to a person who leads the country, who children look to okay. as a role model. But anyway, but, uh, we okay. only have a few I, more minutes I, I, left. No, 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 no. If you throw out a point, you have to allow me to respond. Okay, go ahead. I think We're running nonsense. out of time. We have a hard okay. out, so go ahead. When I was a child, my father didn't say to me, I want you to look to Lyndon Johnson as a role model. This notion that the president's private life, John F. Kennedy had orgies at the White House. Okay, do you speak about that? I don't care about presidents' private lives. You do. I care about sexualizing children. You don't. Dennis Prager, right there, savage. Mic drop moment, shoved it in Anna Kasparian's face, and she has no good response. That's why she was like, we had a hard out. We have a hard out. I can't let you respond, Dennis. We have a hard out. And all of a sudden, now she has time for a response. That's how Anna Kasparian rolls, guys. I care about fighting back against lies regarding educators sexualizing children. That That's is not happening, but you guys do love to defame educators who are already underpaid, undervalued, and should be treated a lot better in this country. So I would love to uh, continue this conversation. Unfortunately, we're running out of time. So Anna Kasparian tried deflecting to Donald Trump's personal life as a good example of what we need to do, what we need to focus on rather than the sexualization of kids. When confronted with a very specific example, that didn't work, so she went to denial. Again, denial, deflection, deceit. That's what the left wing does to a T. Anna can't defend the position. This was a humiliating performance from her all the way around. She tried to escape with the heart out, but Dennis Prager mic dropped on her and she went back to a different point. So Anna acting smug with all the prep, with all the clips, got shut down by Dennis Prager, which is hilarious because the left wing thinks Prager University and Dennis Prager are the biggest clowns on the internet. Well, guess what? He just clowned you, and in the future, we're going to go over him clowning Jank and humiliating him, and Jank raging out because that's who he is. For every level of snarkiness that Anna Kasparian was showing here, Jank is going full rage mode, so if you want to see that, stay tuned to this channel. If you like this video, show me by leaving a like, subscribe for more content, follow me on all my social medias, support me via the support links in the description box of this video. This has been me talking about Anna Kasparian completely failing. Till next time.